Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch with some news from the world of virtual reality. Specifically, VReal just launched a desktop mode. Never heard of VReal? Don't worry, we're going to cover that. And then we'll look at why desktop mode is actually a pretty big deal here. So what exactly is VReal? Well, it is basically a virtual reality Twitch. It gives you the ability to consume someone else's virtual reality experience. And VReal support is baked into the game. So you can use their Unity or Unreal Engine SDK to integrate VReal spectators, I guess you could call them. And then those spectators, instead of just passively watching your game, they could participate in the game world. And until now, that person has always had to have a VR headset. And that's kind of a problem because the number of people with VR headsets is not huge. I think that people thought VR was going to be a much bigger deal at this point in time than it probably has been, if we're honest about things. And then on top of that, um, you've got to also have a headset to consume VReal. So you need to have people making content with the headsets and people consuming content with headsets. And that is not a huge community. So what they've offered today is VReal for desktop. And that's pretty predictable. What this is is desktop mode. This gives you the ability to uh, consume VReal content from your computer. And it's up on Steam today and it is completely free. Now, speaking of free, VReal itself is supposed to stay with a free tier forever. It's in early access right now and it's supposed to release sometime in 2019. So if you're interested in checking out vReal. It's up on Steam. And as I mentioned, it's also free. Now, there is a very limited subset of games supported right now. Right now, the VR games Tilt Brush, which is technically not a game, but a painting application, Blocks, Gorn, Super Hot VR, Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades, uh, Fantastic Contraption, are the supported VR titles right now. And as time goes on, obviously they are going to add more and more support. You as a developer, if you are creating a VR title and you want to have this Twitch-like integration directly in your title, or Twitch++, I suppose we should call it, that is an option out there. And that's kind of what they're hoping to get. So let us take a look at VRail and hopefully my record this time, I don't get the dullest person ever like I did last record of this. I had to throw away a 10 minute recorded video because I just chose to look at the boringest player ever. Now, do be aware, it is about a three gigabyte download. And then once you start adding games, since you, you gotta have all the game levels and stuff for your VRail client to go through, it gets big quick. So for example, my VRail folder is now up to 10 gigabytes, and I've watched one game. So do be aware of that. There is definitely a lot that gets downloaded with this guy. Now, once you've got it, go ahead and launch it. It's gonna choose between VR and Steam VR mode or in non-VR mode. This is desktop mode, select that one. In order to, to author VR content, obviously you're still going to need a VR headset, but you can now consume it using this desktop client. And here we are in the new VReal desktop client. Default view, and you see the various different creator channels that are going on or the various different games that are going on. Or we could drill down this way and pick based off of the games that are currently supported. So uh, I'll use Gorn. It's like a melee fighting game and hopefully I do not pick the dullest person ever made. And the cool thing about this is also in addition to like Twitch streaming, the thought is that people can use this for tutorials and so on. So you can actually record your gameplay and then the person can literally jump right into the game and see it as we're gonna see in a second. So. This was the person I watched last time, and uh, we're not going to do that again. So let's try Stealth Shampoo and see how that goes. Now, I've got no control over how this part actually turns out. Now, the first time you pick a new game, it does a download of all of the assets it needs to actually run that game. But then the second time you launch it or you watch someone else streaming that game, the download is much shorter and much smaller. So here we are. That is the person's aspect in the world. They appear like a panda bear. You are kind of tagging along. So as they switch zones or levels or whatever, it flips you over. So we're loading up, hopefully into the game itself. And hopefully this person knows how to play the game. So we're in the selection menu. And as you can see, we can navigate around with the mouse and the WASD keys like this. And that is the person actually playing the game. We can actually navigate outside of the bounds. We're not being clipped like they are. So we can actually wander around and see a little bit behind the scenes and um, so on in the game. So hopefully this person goes ahead and does something soon. And this is a big part of the reason why I don't watch Twitch streams or the likes in the first place. I just don't find watching other people play games, especially people that don't do anything stealth shampoo. I find it very, very irritating. So here we are, and I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, I'll just cut the video and then bring it back when the action is doing something. 
All right, so after several minutes of absolute nothing, uh, I switched players, gave up on that person, and now here we are in Gorn. And as you can see, you can navigate around the world. I can actually uh, hit spacebar to zoom in on the person I'm looking at. Hit escape, you see the options I'm using to navigate around the world. Or we can actually just ignore the player completely and go explore the level. So let me just go up here. We'll see at the top level. So in theory, what you could have is a bunch of other people spectating the game. You could chat with them. Or you can just sort of interact with the world as the game itself goes on. Like this. And I can actually see where this would be really cool when you were like trying to figure out your way around, say, Dark Souls or something. You could look around the corner, see why that person attacked them or what's about to come. I can see there being a lot of community from being able to actually engage in someone else's game like this. But at the same time, I'm never going to do it myself, to be honest, because I just spent 10 minutes watching people do absolutely nothing. And then here is the other problem. See what's happening with the frame rate? Yeah, there are some performance issues here. Um, hopefully in time that all gets resolved. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of one of the downsides here. But it's a very interesting technology. And I got to say, the fact that they've expanded it to include desktop users makes it so that the potential audience for VReal is so much larger than it was. This does give you the ability to uh, interact with VR games in a way that you currently can't. And I think a lot of people are kind of on the fence about VR, so maybe they're interested in VR titles, but not necessarily committed enough to get a VR headset. Well, this opens that up to them. And <clears throat> I do see how you know there could be a future in this kind of technology. But having it just for VR and the only people that could consume it in VR, I think that was just too many limitations. So this could go a long way towards its adoption. Now I should point out in the background, I'm watching performance. Um, I'm currently using <coughs> 40 megabytes per second of network, uh, two gigs of memory, and 40 or 30% of my GPU off and on and 60% of my CPU right now. So this thing can be a bit of a pig. And as you saw a few times, it's also chunked out a bit. So hopefully it's optimized a bit over time. This isn't the fastest machine in the universe, but it should not be struggling even while recording video. So um, there is some performance stuff to be worked out here, but it is a very cool idea. Even if you're just like the type that likes to explore behind the scenes in game worlds, uh, it does give you that opportunity as well. So you can sort of see how things are made and put together, but just don't go out of bounds or actually I think I think his game may have just ended. Anyways, that's where my video is going to end as well. So that is VReal desktop mode. Gives you the ability to get into VR titles. You can program it into your own in-development VR games, again, using the Unity or Unreal SDK. I, I don't know where virtual reality is going, but I do think that if virtual reality takes off, a communal or a, a community service like this is also needed because VR is too introverted. You're literally one person kind of in your own world and it's hard to share that experience with other people like it is. You know, you can't have people looking over your shoulder or whatever. So this might be the answer to that. I don't know. I, I really don't. But uh, let me know what you think and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.